School meals cancelled, dementia sufferers' houses to be taken, the NHS is dying. But wait a minute, a posh person got married at the weekend. Yay! Yay! This is the Caning Live. Welcome! <laughs> Yes, this is the Caning Live stand-up ranting and debate live from Facebook HQ. This is the most achingly cool place I've ever worked in. Hey, man, just scan your retinas and head on up. Here's a complimentary tablet computer. Bro, how'd you like your veggie shake? <laughs> what a team I have today. There's going to be people prompting my rants and helping me along, but helping field your comments is the sublime AJ Adudu, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And today our caning debaters are Catherine Ryan, James O'Brien and Janet Street Porter. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Look on the middle class male media elites. Half my crew is female. <laughs> and a AJ, where were your parents born? Nigeria. Diversity. <laughs> <laughs> And it's all held together by me. Oh, I can't stand him. He's fucked up Radio 1. It's not Nick Grimshaw. <laughs> Chill out. Right. <laughs> so how does it work? Right, it's simple. It's a very simple premise. I've been monitoring what you guys are peeved about, hunting for the right topics to cane. Whichever's got the most heat, we're going to go out like Theresa May's husbands at the bins. Oh, I do, lo <laughs> I do love a boy's job. I do love a boy's job. I bet you do, Philip. <laughs> but... The general election itself, the boring act of the election, will be avoiding. Do you know why? No, not impartiality. This is the Wild West Internet. It's just too effing boring. Everybody knows the crow is too far in front. I am beyond defeat. <laughs> right? It doesn't... And I can already hear... Wait a minute, listen to Corbyn. It doesn't matter what genius, costed ideas Corbyn tosses out. This is a snap 100 metres election, and no-one wants to see Stephen Hawking take on Usain Bolt. Right? <laughs> My ideas are important to social justice. I've already crossed the finish line, man. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sure you'll disagree. Get angry. Keep sending your comments. But I think I need to set up the first subject. It's never been done like this as far as I know. Each subject will be set up with a stand-up style caning rant, AJ, like Ooh. a pervy Tory at a farm, what's been getting people's goats. Absolutely, <laughs> Lord. Uh, right, now people are more livid about the dementia tax at the moment, though, so should we talk about that? Yes, this is the first one I'm up for, this dementia tax. Disgusting. Dementia sufferers will now lose their homes to pay for their care. WT actual F. The crow, <laughs> the crow has done it again, come up with an idea so sick and evil that the script writers of the Saw franchise would have rejected it in draft one. <laughs> I, I want to play a game. I want to bleed you of your house while you lose your mind. <laughs> no. But this is the best bit. Did you hear this? The threshold of house value, £100,000. Where can you live in a house for £100,000? How out of touch is the imperial tax overlord, Philip Hammond? <laughs> no, no, no. Settle down, peasants. We're only including people's homes who are worth more than £100,000 <laughs> of your shiny coins, which you may spend in Aldi or, or Lidl or Asda. So <laughs> there's no need to panic. Tis a generous offer from the overlord, and you may kiss my ring, but not too close, because you smell a food bank and syphilis. <laughs> But do you know the most shocking thing about this, Janet? The pensioners are grateful. Thank you, Mr Hammond. Tis most generous. As long as I die lonely in a shed in Eastbourne, I can't be robbed. Hurrah! <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I find it weird that Theresa May has attacked pensioners. That is her main target voter. That would be like Jeremy Corbyn taxing beards and soy lattes in Hackney. No way, man. We're not having it, Corbus. I'm going to move to the Calais camp and immediately move Syrians into my thatch. <laughs> Syrians, Syrians live in my pubic thatch <laughs> and play with ironic 70s trinkets from a junk shop. Corbyn should have released his manifesto on vinyl. That would have got it through, bro. No. <laughs> Theresa May has gone for pensioners. Surely that is an own goal. No, it's not, Mr. Grimshaw, uh, Kane. Only, <laughs> only dementia sufferers will have their houses seized as they slowly die. <laughs> We're excluding other things, such as strong and stable diseases, old-fashioned ailments <laughs> with grit and vigour, things a Brit can be proud to die of, like <laughs> cancer, <laughs> pestilence, rickets, witch's foot and devil rash. <laughs> you, do you see the genius? I have only attacked those who wouldn't have remembered to vote anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
She does say strong and stable quite a lot, though, don't you think, James? I mean, I don't want to throw rumours around, but when my great-grandma got dementia, it did start with her mindlessly repeating phrases over and over again. Strong and stable, strong and stable. <laughs> nurse, I've shit myself, nurse. <laughs> Seriously, how can it be right to live in a country, right, where you work your tits off? How many people here were told, get on the housing ladder, save up, buy a house, and then your house is going to be taken off you at the end, like a ghost Thatcher passing on the baton? Everyone, it's the 80s, buy your own houses. Now, Teresa, yes, thank you. I will now take that house back. Now you're old. Lovely. What a lovely idea. Working to buy your house and the crow circling, waiting for you to die, to seize it back. And there's the death rattle and hold and seize the assets. Right? <laughs> you buy it, you die in it, you pay for it. It's the circle of death. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm 90 so I can pay Teresa's terrifying quiz. Cancer or dementia? I do hope I win. Time to reveal your star prize, Mr Kane. It's good news. It's terminal cancer. You get to keep your house. Yay! I can have a party in the conservatory, which will still be mine after I die riddled with strong and stable tumours. <laughs> Hurrah! <laughs> going absolutely bonkers online. We've got thousands of people watching already. Hi, guys. We're live. Um, now, a lot of people are saying it's really sad to see the elderly give up everything that they've worked hard for. Um, Alexandra says that she's not surprised by Theresa May's policies. She'll tax oxygen if she could. Um, and a lot of people are also saying, guys, people pay for their own health care anyway. What's the big deal? There's, we've got to strike a balance, surely. Right, Catherine. There's a lot. <laughs> do, you, do you love your old people in Canada where you're from, or do you think this is a fair policy? Well, first of all, I don't think we're supposed to say dementia anymore. It's Mayism is a more <laughs> PC term. <laughs> really offended by that. No, I mean, I think, yeah, old people, you can get rid of them and take their house. I'm fine with that. So you're, you're down with the dementia tax? But, yeah. you, but when we get old and we lose our minds as self-doubting stand-up mm -hmm. comedians in a home in Eastbourne, wouldn't you want to pass your house on to your children? See, it's really confusing because the Conservatives have paid to buy ads now. When you Google dementia tax, the Conservative website comes up first and it says, no, 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 we won't take your house and we won't do that. And, and then the Labour site has one where they go, well, they definitely are taking your house. I just don't know who to believe, what to do, uh, what's really going to happen. They are, they are the top two James things. James O'Brien. Number one, the Conservatives saying everything's fine, don't panic. And then yeah. number two, the second thing, so if you read to the second thing that comes up on the search engine, it's saying, no, no, do panic. This is absolutely awful and nobody knows whether, whether they're coming or going, least of all Theresa May, who announced a cap earlier today that isn't mm -hmm. actually a cap while undertaking a U-turn that isn't actually a U-turn. So does I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you, who does this actually affect, though, James? Well, speaking as a pensioner... No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the front door. The most gorgeous-looking pensioner anyone well, here knows. You are speaking as a pensioner, when I thing. die, I don't care who gets my house, because why should kids inherit a house? <laughs> when my mother died, I didn't get a house. I just got her old telly. Yeah. <laughs> that would be next. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to no, be on I that one day. No, I think, and also, it's Jeremy Corbyn that um, called it a dementia tax, when it's not a dementia tax, it's a tax on... It's a way of funding care in your own home. Now, I'm sure we'd all agree that if we get really sick, We'd rather die in our own homes than in a hospital for all sorts of reasons. Now, there are more old people in the population than ever before, so who's going to pay for it? How are we going to fund it? Surely the easiest way to fund it would be if everybody paid a separate tax from the minute you started work to pay for the National Health Service, but they're not doing that. They don't want to do that. And frankly, when you're dead, if the government wants to cash in your house and take most of the money, <laughs> I don't know. Problem. No. <laughs> Danny, you actually what make a very fair comment, right? Because a few people online are saying, but look, who is going to pay for it? And yeah. also, um, <laughs> there's a few OAPs who are saying... What do you mean a few OAPs? Uh, there's going to be loads watching. Yeah, surely. Um, and they're saying, if uh, my children um, want to ship me off to a home, <laughs> they don't deserve my house. They should be yeah, looking after me point. at home anyway. Yeah. Mm. 
I, it's not. It's, I mean, the whole point of conservatism post Thatcher was that you would. You, you, this is why you were allowed to buy your council house, so that you would have something that's what to, I find confusing. to pass on to your children. It's such a. It's a why should people inherit no, but that's something they have? No, that that's not the point. Ask Margaret Thatcher. Although, to be honest, you'd struggle at the moment. She, um, <laughs> she, she promised people that they would be able to, to hand on stuff in the way that previously only the rich and the posh could do. So this was supposed to be the party that allowed everybody to have a. A, a legacy to hand on, and now she's come out and said, no, we'll, that, we'll take that but, away, which is possibly brave. Yeah, like, like, maybe it's just a working class mentality, but yeah. the idea that I would own my own house, bricks and mortar, that was drummed into me by my old man from day one. Meat, buying meat <laughs> at a good price, <laughs> and owning your own house. They're the two things. Yeah. So if, if there's no point in me owning my own house, what's the point in... No, but at the moment, a load of housing stock is occupied by people of my generation, to, you know, sitting in houses that have become worth a disproportionate amount of money. And at the same time, without going into boring detail, we're building less houses than ever before. So the only way to if you like, release more housing and release more money to go into housing is to force the government to take back people's homes when they die, cash them in and only but, but hand it, but, out £100,000. But, but it should be everybody's house. It would bring that, housing it, prices down, it though, wouldn't do, it? But at the moment, what you've got, I mean, if she hadn't done this, you'd have yeah. young people that are never going to own their own homes. Well, they're not going to anyway. Some, no, but it'd be yeah, even worse. You Croydon when you're 90 if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've sold my kidney, I've sold my uh, kidney. I do I think we've got a stagnant me. housing uh, market, uh, uh, which yes. is stagnating because of older people occupying houses, which is why I'm putting my hand up and saying, when I die... You can have it. Shall we right, just right. have you from right, right, at 75? Right. Don't you think, Catherine, we should go in at 75? Go, you yeah. reach your 75th birthday. Oh, poof, this house is now vacant. Everyone... Oh, hang on, I'm 70. <laughs> Never. It is really annoying that they bought their houses for nine beans. <laughs> <laughs> Six million quid. Yeah. And they, and they also claim that, that everybody young should be able to do what they did. They, they, we, we, we bought our house for nine beans. Why can't these young people today? They spend all their money on, on, on coffee. Avocado. On avocado <laughs> pears. <laughs> but don't we have a real problem that um, the cost of the National Health Service, uh, the National Health Service needs bailing out almost on a daily basis. It, if you look at the way the National Health Service is funded, too much money goes on admin and not enough money goes on frontline care. Now, if you look at care in your own home, councils can't even afford to provide the basic level of that as it is now. And I think in the, some of the newspapers today, it said that the council is uh, co councils can't even afford to give you enough care that they're legally obliged to at the moment. So we've got a crisis already. But isn't it, isn't it about choices? Like, you can live in a society where you can spend money on different things, yeah? Yeah. We don't have to have, like, a shiny new missile... Uh, we might want to buy some more social care instead, don't you think? I mean, you make, you make, you make choices. You've got a bucket of money. You can either go, and, go into the arms trade in Saudi Arabia or we can, buy some, uh, we can buy some houses for a pensioner. I know which I'm into more. The arms trade, but I am quite violent. <laughs> <laughs> but, Russell, let me ask you something, Russell. <laughs> yes. When you, if you, uh, would you pay more now? Yep. Would you be prepared to imagine what it might be like to be my age or even older? And if you got is this sick, a date? It's not for a date. It's not. <laughs> Why did you come and imagine she's what it's got? Been. A house. She's got to leave a house to someone, Russell. Yeah. Okay. I'm after your house. <laughs> Russell, when you when you were little and just starting out of work, would you little? Have paid, oh, <laughs> no, no, I mean, younger. Yeah. Uh, when you were younger, would you have paid more money into a national health service, a tax, or whatever, to ensure? that when you got older you could have care in your own home because nobody has done that and no. that's why we're in this mess so young uh, is it do you think it is um Catherine Jones, do you think it's young people being irresponsible? Should they be asked to step up? And could it be an no, opt-in thing? No, it has, it has to be a tax on wealth. This is this is the thing that a gay mate makes it slightly an odd thing for a Conservative Prime Minister to do, and also explains why at the moment she's coming such a cropper. Because there's only the only way you can fund this level of changing sort of population is by is by taxing wealth. You can't take any much more off earnings. You yeah. can't take money off people who haven't got any. So the only people who've got anything you can take away are the people who've got quite a big fortune at the end of their life. But they're not going to bring that in because who's got the biggest fortune? at the end of their life? The Queen, the Duke of Westminster, uh, Prince Charles, people like that. You're not going to take away 40% of their well, estates. We are, we, are, we are going to start wrapping up. Do, do, do we take Buckingham Palace to play for Prince Philip's final? <laughs> 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 he just won't stop saying, Bastard! Bastard! <laughs> bastard! <laughs> bastard! I just love take... <laughs> what Theresa May is doing right now because, like you said, she's got a lead and it's like in a race, you've got a 20-mile lead and you just style it out by 
falling at every hurdle. That's what she's doing. Because you, yeah. It's so cute. Might be deliberate because <laughs> she doesn't want to do the Brexit negotiation. Okay, I, like I feel it. like we could talk about this all yeah. night, but we literally can't, as that would invert the thermodynamics laws. <laughs> we know them. Uh, <laughs> we could go on and on and on about. Are it. people getting furious on online? And what do we talk about next? People are getting really <laughs> furious online. Uh, people are also loving our outfits, ladies. So happy days. Well, that's no cutting for James. Very cutting for James. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Grey long sleeve <laughs> top. Actually, new. <laughs> Who's rocking the grey long sleeve top like a boss? <laughs> <laughs> um, but people do want to talk about uh, Tim Farron, yes, who right. uh, is talking about legalising cannabis. Discuss. Yes, it's caning number two, ladies and gentlemen. It's a. Uh, Tim Farron wants us... This, he's held this out as his way. If you haven't heard of Tim Farron, which, if you have, get a life. Uh, <laughs> Tim Farron is the leader of the Liberal... Is it D Democrats? Liber uh, some party. <laughs> but if you don't know which one he is, he looks like a geography teacher who's just tasted his first narcotic. <laughs> Anyone with this party taking joints? I sure am. And, uh, <laughs> if, you don't, if you're not political, don't worry. All you need to know is the Liberal Democrats should be the Liberal and Democratic Party, and it comes out he's a closet godder, right? Mm. And people are like, what does it matter what people's private beliefs are? I care. I care what your values are when you're going to be implementing laws. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. And now and again, sure enough, the mask slips. You know, he'll, he'll be talking and everything should be reasonable. <laughs> oh. And I am a person who is liberal. But if you do touch the willy of another man, you will burn in eternal hellfire. And you will burn with all the other dirty gays from history while I laugh and look on. And... Uh, the other day, an old interview came out with him talking about unplanned pregnancy. The Liberal Democratic Party should have one stance. It should be legal, pro-choice. But, yeah, it is pro-choice. But if in the event you've taken the seed of a non-believer into your sinful womb, <laughs> you will burn in hell along with all the other dirty pillars of Sodom. <laughs> and now we're supposed to believe he's up for legalising cannabis. Yeah, I am up for legalising cannabis, <laughs> as long as it doesn't relax the anus. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know... How will the other parties react? I mean, obviously, the Green Party is totally up for it, as long as we can create organic and fair trade. <laughs> Some of our, our immigrants can pluck them whilst wearing their ethnic clogs. And uh, how, will the U how, how will UKIP... I want to see Paul Nuttall's reaction to this. You know, the weed <laughs> being brought in largely by Muslim Afghan migrants, <laughs> fed to our young girls without their consent. What I want to know is, why can't we have British weed grown in a British loft with British lamps for British people to pick and get stoned on and get British schizophrenia. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what about the SNP? Will it be popular north of the border? We will only... <laughs> <laughs> we will only smoke powdered thistle and <laughs> not the imperial drug of the English invader. <laughs> and, uh, Corbyn? Uh. Corbyn, where are you on the cannabis issue? Well, man, my jacket's made of hemp. Why not gather around me, followers, and smoke the jacket of socialist Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, the only person's opinion who matters on this cannabis debate is Theresa May. Mm. Where are you? She's not responded yet. We know what she's going to say. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> we shall not free up the thinking of the peasants. We shall not let them smoke cannabis as... Hang on a second. It would increase the risk of dementia. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is this is this debate's old, old. You start it in your bloody A level and GCSE at school, and you still do it as an adult. And here it is at the election again. AJ, what are people saying? I mean, unsurprisingly, quite a lot of people are well up for this. People <laughs> are saying, yeah, bring cannabis, legalise it, maybe tax it, um, and use the tax to fund our NHS and our schools. Um, but some people are very concerned about potential um, health risk mental health issues, and maybe that will be bad in the long run. Yeah, we do have to... I know it's, I know it's hard as we're all like legend stoners on this panel, but uh, <laughs> we have to try and have a balanced debate. What, what do you think, bro? Fist explode, Catherine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love cannabis. I don't just You're smoke a Canadian. Cannabis. I mean, your flag is a cannabis flag, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. It's, uh, it's decriminalised in Canada, and if you have a special medical card, you can buy it in shops and things. I don't smoke cannabis, and I'm from Canada, because you can have something be legal and not abuse it. And there are things that are bad for us, but that make a lot of money. Sugar, yep. dairy. Yep. Uh, the Dakota Pipeline, yeah. but we do it <laughs> for the money. I'm really confused as to why the government doesn't want to do it, and like they don't really care if we're hurt. So give us weed and cannabis oil for treatment of certain cancers yeah. and disease. 
I think it can only be good. Oh, how many how many Risley would you need to roll a Dakota <laughs> pipeline? Lots, <laughs> <laughs> lots. Yep. James, what do you think? I'm, uh, Should, in a word, legalised cannabis, yes or no? Yes. Then, yes. Yes. Billions, what about billions of pounds to raise, and and in terms of mental health issues, which are there are some links. The, the more regulated it is, the less problems there would be, the fewer problems there would be, because you'd be buying uh, strains that you were familiar with. You'd sort of, I'm told that if you go to Amsterdam, you can go into coffee yeah, shops and they've got all sorts of, yeah. it's and in the rough Some light. people even have a hand job afterwards. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's not that rough. Yeah, and, 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 and there are no downsides as a result of that. Apparently. Ja Janet, surely, <laughs> surely this is the problem. Cannabis is a simplistic label. There isn't one thing. There's genetically engineered scary skunk with THC off the scale. And then there's granddad Bob Marley weed. You pluck out the garden, natural like yam, it good, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing, of, the thing is, if it was legalised, there could be some form of quality control. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how many times have you smoked something or taken something and it's like, oh, my... Oh. What's happening? I have to just say never, just no, in case the BBC me. ever wants to believe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am the woman that was going to put hash in my wedding cake, but the dealer never turned up. <laughs> <laughs> when I got married in 19... The first time, 1967, the summer of love, uh, I was going to have a hash-free uh, hash layer for the relatives and a hash layer for the friends, and, of course... The that is risky, though, isn't it? <laughs> Just well, help yourself, actually, toddlers, the police, to the... To the, the uh, which tier was it? The toddlers are stoned. <laughs> yeah, well, the police busted my flat and took away my wedding cake... And, what? Uh, ..for uh, forensic testing and drilled through from every angle, so mm -hmm. it was very, very hard to send it... To Your are wedding you cake sure that, that, that actually happened and that you didn't <laughs> have a wedding cake full of hash and you just imagined that the police <laughs> had and drilled it? Were they dressed as clowns with glitter guns? We got given loads of drugs at that wedding and I what? put them all in an envelope and wrote drugs on it and went off on honeymoon, so it's very easy for the police to well, take the drugs. A, a balanced <laughs> moral message there. <laughs> 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 Like Catherine, I don't bother to smoke dope now. I've been there and done that. But if I was going to smoke dope, I would buy it from a shop mm. that had the categories, uh, you know, advertising and quality control. Troll was gu guaranteed. And the most important thing about legalising dope is the money it would raise, yeah. which would be huge, uh, because yep. the drugs trade and the sex trade are the two things in the black economy that we're missing out on taxing. Yeah. So yeah. just tax it. A few people online are saying it's one thing uh, legalising cannabis, but we should um, restrict it to be smart on the indoors. It's, it's, hey? it's good for smokers, basically. But what about if you were... So not in a public place where people might see you being a legend. A uh, season. <laughs> <laughs> no, we lied. We definitely lied. <laughs> there's a few people as well who uh, they say that they don't want it. Uh, there's nothing more boring than a stoner. Uh, so keep it illegal. But I, I hear what people are saying. Let me play um, devil's advocate for a second. Uh, why, why stop there? If it's if it's a crime with no victim. You know why wear it? Why wear a seatbelt? Why not take heroin? You know, no one's you're not breaking. No one's getting hurt except yourself. Why not heroin? Why not cocaine? What what is what's this? Well, I think all drugs should be legalised. Do you definitely? I absolutely do think all drugs should be legalised. What I find really extraordinary is that we waste all millions and millions of pounds every year on what the police call the war on drugs. We lost it. Mm. We've lost it, and you can't ever win it because also, at the moment, the rise in legal highs and what's happened with yes. that, as fast as they make a legal high illegal, another one will be created. So mm. it's not a war you can ever win. You know there's, there's a problem when the government... I think this was actually the, the Labour government. They appoint a drug czar who's like a really highly qualified scientist. Yeah. That was a nickname of someone at my student union. <laughs> 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 Everyone's got a drug czar. His name was Zachary. In their past. Zachary. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Zachary. Drug czar. <laughs> the, the, the one I'm thinking of was called, I think, David Nutt. Professor yeah. David yeah. Nutt. Yeah. Office. One of his names. Well, I like David Nutt. Themselves. I'm the drug czar. <laughs> and, and, and he said to the Home Secretary Jackie Smith, "We should definitely legalise yeah. cannabis." They sacked so, him. So she sacked him. Sacked which him. Is, what's the point of having a drug czar? Um, uh. Catherine, do you, don't you think, like in certain contexts, if people were getting stoned rather than drinking, that it would be better? Like right. at, fo at football games, like, why can't you kick the ball a bit slower? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody with uh, alcoholics in their family or anyone who's suffered, that seems to me to be a very violent, destructive drug. Imagine your dad was just high all the time. I know, man. Come in, playing video games. 
eating your packed lunch for the next day. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I got in late last night, Dad, but what's late and what's early? <laughs> the circle that sort of connects, man. <laughs> High five, Dad. A lot of people um, are concerned about the externalities of of drugs. Um, so there has been research uh, to suggest that drugs do create cycles. And so whilst it's great for everyone to become a stoner or do whatever, um, it's not cool for someone to be on drugs and then go out and stab someone. Dark guys. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose alcoholics aren't violent, aren't abusive to their partners yeah. and yeah. everything else. What about c and cigarettes and alcohol take more lives and do more? Sugar, sugar, sugar is causing no. so no. many. If I have a pack of refreshers, I will take you down. I'm, <laughs> 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 I'm most violent when I'm off sugar. Yeah. Watch out then. If it's legal, you don't have to smoke it either, because the, the, all these sort mm -hmm. of new fancy ways of getting it into your system that are being pioneered in the parts of the states that have have legalized it. So you've got kind of inhalers and tablets and, and, mm. and cookies and wedding cakes and... <laughs> <laughs> Someone started that wedding cake thing back in 67. I don't know who it was. It's just a rumour. Apparently great, police huh? got the original batch. <laughs> AJ, do you think we're just about done on this? We are absolutely done on this. A lot of people um, agree with you, Donna. Just legalise all drugs. I've even got a, ca um, a comment from Natalie Turner. Um, Janet for PM. Oh, oh no. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Janet, what would be the first thing you would do if you were <laughs> Prime Minister tomorrow? What would be the first thing you would change? Mm, have an all-female cabinet, probably. Because, you know, we can multitask. Yes. <laughs> what do you think of that, Jane? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not going to say no. I'm sitting there to Street Porter. Great idea. I just, wanted, men. I just wanted you to be punched while we were live. <laughs> OK, I think we've uh, we got time just for one more, Kayleigh. We do. Discussion. Lots of people want to talk about the housing, housing crisis, free school dinners being taken away, uh, university fees. But let's talk about binge drinking. Yes. It's a hot topic. Why do Brits love getting pissed abroad. Yeah, this one surprisingly came up a lot. It's because all over people's uh, Facebook, Instagram feeds and on the news, we're already seeing the pictures of the girl holding the shot glasses. We're seeing the horror stories, the fights, the people getting drunk. Some people get pregnant on holiday, legends. And uh, <laughs> the, thing I wanna, uh, the thing I want to ask is this. What is it about British people where we lack an in-between gear? If you're watching this in other countries in the world, let me just translate for you. There are only two stereotypes of the British that are alive and well. And this is a problem. One, that we're repressed, shuffling along, looking at our feet, unable to make sexual conduct, or let's go freaking mental and nothing in between. <laughs> is it not a problem that we do not have a third gear? Do you know what people in Melbourne can do, Australia? They can go out in the middle of the week and have a moderate amount of alcohol and share a bottle of wine. Share a bottle of wine. Someone <laughs> will be like, I'm switching off. It's the truth. A British person will bugle a bottle of wine before they leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> and out. If I eat, knock me out, Gary. <laughs> British, <laughs> British people don't go out or they go out large. They don't have an in-between. You either stay in or you go out, Sambuca in the face, light it, your mate pisses it off. That's how <laughs> it has to I had, The other week, I was going out with a friend of mine who it's your turn to drive. And he was like, in that case, I'm not going to go. In his head, in his head, attending and not drinking was the same as not going at all. We are that mental. And, uh, and if you're wondering what it's like in other countries, uh, pick any country, but the Europeans, I think, Brexit, the Europeans... <laughs> I went to Italy, Janet, for, a, like, a romantic weekend, me and Lindsay, cos I'm hashtag heterosexual, random. And, uh, <laughs> I know, I love pussy, WTF. <laughs> oh, I, uh, honestly, you bring it, ladies, I'll eat it. No, the, uh... <laughs> Stay in the seat till the <laughs> No, uh, I went to Italy and it was a Friday night, Venice. Yeah, that's romantic weekend. Uh, wait, uh, you know, that's not boozing territory. And yet, because it was a Friday, when I was in the shower, the thought came into my head, let's have it. I'm like, what is wrong with the Brit that simply because it's Friday that goes through? So we went to the town square and it was like all full of locals, 11 pm on a Friday night. Do you know what I saw there, James? Families. <laughs> I saw families sat out, 11pm, talking, mums and dads, teenage sons included, old people there, not waiting for their dementia to kick in so we can take their houses, die you old bitch, but included at the table, <laughs> the family pet at the table, there were couples drunk, who drunk a little bit, wobbling, but it was a community there and I thought back with disgust.
to the average British town, South End on Sea, where I'm from, on a Friday freaking night. Donna slashing into a drain while <laughs> oh, Gary films it. That's it. Aim it if you can, babe. We'll go on. <laughs> why? Well, I asked, we will debate this. Well, I'm, I want to get to the meat of why, okay? Mm. And I asked my Italian friend who's genuinely called Sergio. It's not as hey, oh, I'm a hello, I'm a stereotype. Bonjour, no, no, he's called Sergio. <laughs> and he said it's because, like all cultures, like the Canadians, I believe, in Toronto, they space the pleasures out throughout the week. On Monday, we go out, we have a small meal. Why not? Tuesday, we go out, we have a small bottle of wine. We share it. Shared, right? <laughs> Wednesday, we meet with friends, we have dinner. Thursday, we drink and dance. Friday, sure, we drink a little bit more, but we don't save it all up till the end of the week, then detonate like fucking nut jobs. We do. <laughs> the Brits like nothing better than a week of total denial followed by explosive drinking. That is us. Monday, stayed in, ate dry cereal, stared at the wife. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday, sat in the spare room reading a book, because she hasn't touched my penis since 1990. <laughs> right? Wednesday, watched telly. Thursday, film. Friday, nine pints. Smashed up a bus stop, back to work on Monday. <laughs> We're all Britannia. <laughs> wrong with Brits? I know! Do you know what? Daniel um, has wrote a great comment. Uh, judging by his profile picture, he's a true Brit um, and he says, uh, of course we're going to drink ourselves into oblivion. One, Brits hate foreigners. Two, they hate hot weather, always complaining. And three, they hate any other language than English. <laughs> they're on the holidays! Of course they're going to get pissed. But it's, not, it's not just holidays. It happens here as well. Yeah. When I was first thinking about this, it comes from because this, this story becomes seasonal because of what we're seeing on holiday. You know the girl who's like, I'm celibate all year, then Falaraki Chlamydia home. Her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like with nothing in between. Why, what is this lurching feast and famine thing that seems to be at the core of the British psyche? As an outsider looking mm. in, Catherine, what's wrong with us? I mean, Dr. You, should, Catherine. you should not go on holiday at all. <laughs> there is no need for you to visit the countries you voted to leave. Just stay. You are oh, terrible God. ambassadors for each other when you're out. And I will say that. And it's dangerous for you. Mm. I don't know why. I see, in the middle is so nice. My friend James A. Kester, and your friend, a very talented comedian, mm -hmm. he says there are four states. You could be sober, tipsy, drunk, or hungover. And tipsy is the only one where you're not crying. Yeah. <laughs> and the middle. Wait there, you're crying sober. Tipsy, of course. <laughs> tipsy is such a lovely place to be. We don't do tipsy, do we? Oh. I, 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 this is, this is the I'm tipsy possi now. I think we're <laughs> Southern, Southern European countries drink drink quite a lot, but they drink it all the time. Very gentle yeah. level of tipsiness that's constant. You'll see fellas, old boys in Spain having a little brandy for breakfast. But how many lovely. drunk people do you see? Precisely. In Spain? So they, they sustain many? a constant level of tipsiness. They, they never go, they're never sober. And they're never slaughtered. They're it's very perfect. High, well, there are high levels of alcoholism in Spain and France. It's just that we don't really see it. They conduct themselves in a much more dignified way. But I would like to point out that the people who drink the most alcohol in Great Britain are the over 45s, really? wow. not young people, which is really it's funny. all of us getting pissed. Now, yeah. But I think it's that the young people binge more exactly as you say. They have the no concept of moderation so if they're going to drink they're going to drink a bucket yeah. of it and i know when i've tried to stop drinking it's the idea of having a whole day without a drink oh my yeah. god how many hours in a day without a drink it's like 124 i have to just i have to just say because i know we've got lots of irish people watching this count i'm i'm being told for ireland as well the irish, the irish. The irish and the brits share this trait is it something geographical is it something about being at this it's the words moderation like we don't do moderation do we but it gets dark so early compared to Mediterranean countries. Do you think well? it's another thing that yeah, men, English, uh, well, British men don't really talk? Yeah. Uh, they can't really talk. Yes. And, uh, and it's not an Irish problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that's it's a, but speaking about my own experience yeah. out with men in they the room. Don't talk to you because they're scared. Oh, it's because they can't get a word in edgeway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was a good fight, but. <laughs> no, Janet, do you, do you think that I, do, I think you're onto something there. I, I can't. I swear. think I, I, I'm a British man underneath all this, and I, <laughs> I personally think I would still be a virgin if it wasn't for alcohol. There would be no British babies if it wasn't for. There would be an island of skeletons with politely raised top hats. There would be no British. <laughs> we we don't get laid without alcohol in Canada. Could we go out for like a milkshake in the afternoon and just see if we liked each other? Yeah. Do you travel to LA now on holiday or for work? 
I've been to America, yeah, and people go out on dates sober. Don't it's they? really weird because now when I order champagne with breakfast, they're like, "Don't you mean green smoothie?" And I'm like, "No, I'm British now." And they're like, "Oh, fine, here's." Yeah. The food. Would, you, would you like a potato with that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're the only country that says I'm going to get drunk. Today. Yeah. Oh. You make plans what is that about? to do. It. I've never fallen in love or gotten drunk on purpose. Neither one. Really? It's just like if tipsiness gets a little bit out of control and I'm drunk, I'm upset about it. No, it's like then I either get off with the cab driver or <laughs> I feel really sick the next two days mm. or both. It's a go it is a goal. I'll tell you something else Brits cannot handle. The all-inclusive oh, band. Oh. That once that is on the wrist, it is like a challenge. I know where the pro <laughs> there is a profit line in my head. <laughs> and I, I want to be bro if I'm there for seven nights, I want to break even by Wednesday, and I want to be in profit. Yeah. I want to yeah. eat salmon and prawns so and so drink right. champagne, even if I don't fancy it. I'd like it in a bucket, so I could just eat like that. It's not, it's, not, it's not even a class thing. There's a posh hotel in Covent Garden oh, yeah. that I walk past that does a breakfast, and it's 38 quid. You can have as much Bellinis as you can drink. And I'm thinking oh, yeah. in my head, yeah, I'll, I'll just tell you. In my head, I'm thinking, how many Bellinis? How many, when would you actually move into? Into up on the deal. And what, eight, gonna... eight, the price, hotel price is probably only about four. So mm. people would be doing two bottles of champagne before they go to work. Now, don't you think <laughs> the drink is a too cheap full stop? Like, if you go in no. the supermarket... Yes. yes, I do. If you go in the supermarket and you say, all right, I want a nice bottle of wine, try and find a bottle of wine that costs more than three ninety nine. Where do like, you shop? Hey! 1974! There's like a yard of really, but, really cheap wine. That's what? interesting, because a lot of people are saying online, hey... Yeah. Especially on holiday, the booze is cheap. We are stocking up. Um, a few people are saying it is d due to emotional issues that we have in this country. And a few people have also suggested that maybe it's a religious thing. We are largely a non-religious country. Maybe that's got something to do. Well, with we well do I, I don't think Ireland suffers with that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got off my head last night. I forgive you, my son. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the holiday resorts, I've just realised that you never see any Spanish people in, 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 or, or French people or Italian people in the clubs that the Brits end up in. No. no. So they're such shitholes, generally, these nightclubs that you go to when you're on holiday. But you have to get mullered. If you were Italian, they've got some secret club around the corner where all the Italians stand around looking suave and, and handsome and, and stay sober. They send us to the, to the aircraft hangars where we drink <laughs> beer by the bucket. I, I, I dated, for a very short period of time, mm. a, an Aust an, a girl from Austria. She didn't understand how we've associated going out with drink. Mm. So she would meet her friends and they'll like get a pot of tea and they'll be there till 11 in the morning. Some of them even drinking after tea. Could you imagine a British person dancing sober? The spectacle of it. <laughs> sober person dancing. Passport burnt, please. I, I, had a, I had a Greek girlfriend and I was... I, was many, she many, many, she, she was, she was. <laughs> At 10 o'clock at night, staying with her family. First time I went to visit, should we all go out for frozen yoghurt? What? what? We all got the whole family. I bet you from it. You're like a dirty <laughs> cow. <laughs> So my mum and dad were there. Yeah. It was frozen yoghurt instead of going out for a drink. Or, and they did. They all sat around in the nice balmy evening drink, eating frozen so yoghurt. We're running out of time, but like, mm. just, just so we don't dis descend into cosy agreement. Yes. How would you change this? If we wanted the next generation, the kids now that are 8, 9 and 10 are about to start their drinking over the park and getting pregnant by the... <laughs> Getting They're pregnant by the dog shit bin. Russell. Yep. They're drinking less than the generation before anyway. So is it education? I, is that the answer? Yeah, and I think they've seen how we are and <laughs> no, no, no. You could become like 28 days like the Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's already working. I think younger people do drink. Oh, the oh. problem is binging, which is what you said at the beginning. They drink less, yes. but when they drink but they how drink. can we how would you educate how can we stop that? Do you think it's price? Is that not a bit of a classist thing to say? If we make it expensive, then the peasants at least won't drop their <laughs> Because like uh, Toff's gonna be like, so what? Twenty quid for a bottle of beer? Random. Oh well that's <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, but that's the same excuse they use on smoking. I mean smoking's got more and more expensive, but we in fact some politicians have said, well, you make it smoking expensive, you're taxing the working class, or you're taxing poor people, which I think is incredibly patronising. Yeah, it's also true. Isn't it? I mean, it's, for, for people who are addicted to smoking, it is when you'd spark up, it's the best you felt, arguably, all day. It's, you're smoking. back to alcohol. The thing you were saying about Dean Martin, I think, said, 
about teetotals. Well, imagine waking up every morning knowing that's the best you're going to feel all day. Oh, my God. All day. Oh, and alive. That's it's terrible. not that bad, I'm sure. <laughs> um, a lot of people are just saying, have a drink. Yeah. Just chill out, have a drink. Um, a lot of people think it's to do with the prices. We should maybe put prices of alcohol up. Um, and a lot of people are also saying that we drink to forget that we're coming back to crap weather <laughs> and the Tory party. <laughs> oh, what oh, a <laughs> Well, I think we're just about out of time. We're going to wrap it up there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. So that's it from uh, the Caning Live. A massive thanks to my panel, Janet Street Porter, James O'Brien and Catherine Ryan. Now, remember, register to vote. You have until midnight tonight. It's Monday today. We're live at the moment. Please vote. To all those people who think it doesn't matter, let me exclusively reveal this. Theresa May has just announced that if elected... She will abolish FIFA 17 and TOWIE. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Round of applause for our Strong and stable diseases, old fashioned <laughs> ailments with grit and vigour, things a Brit can be proud to die of, like cancer, <laughs> pestilence, rickets, witch's foot, and devil rash. <laughs> you, do you see the genius? I have only attacked those who wouldn't have remembered to vote anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she does say strong and stable quite a lot, though, don't you think, James? I mean, I don't want to throw rumours around, but when my great-grandma got dementia, it did start with her mindlessly repeating phrases over and over again. Strong and stable, strong and stable. <laughs> nurse, I've shit myself, nurse. <laughs> Seriously, how can it be right to live in a country, right, where you work your tits? So how many people here were told, get on the housing ladder, save up, buy a house, and then your house is going to be taken off you at the end, like a ghost Thatcher passing on the baton? Everyone, it's the 80s, buy your own houses. Now, Teresa, yes, thank you. I will now take that house back. Now you're old. Lovely. What a lovely idea, working to buy your house and the crow circling waiting for you to die, to seize it back. And there's the death rattle and hold and seize the assets. Right? <laughs> you buy it, you die in it, you pay for it. It's the circle of death. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm nine who are worth more than 100,000 of your shiny coins, which you may spend in Aldi or, or Lidl or Asda. So there's no need to panic. Tis a generous offer from the overlord. And you may kiss my ring, but not too close, because you smell a food bank and syphilis. <laughs> but do you know the most shocking thing about this, Janet? The pensioners are grateful. Thank you, Mr Hammond. Tis most generous. As long as I die lonely in a shed in Eastbourne, I can't be robbed. Hurrah! <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you, but I find it weird that Theresa May has attacked pensioners. That is her main target voter. That would be like Jeremy Corbyn taxing beards and soy lattes in Hackney. <laughs> no way, man. We're not having it, Corbus. I'm going to move to the Calais camp and immediately move Syrians into my thatch. <laughs> Syrians, Syrians live in my pubic thatch <laughs> and play with ironic 70s trinkets from a junk shop. Corbyn should have released his manifesto on vinyl. That would have got it through, bro. No. <laughs> Theresa May has gone for pensioners. Surely that is an own goal. No, it's not, Mr. Grimshaw, uh, Kane. Only, <laughs> only dementia sufferers will have their houses seized as they slowly die. <laughs> We're excluding other things, such as... And today our caning debaters are Catherine Ryan, James O'Brien and Janet Street Porter. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Look on, middle-class male media elites. Half my crew is female. <laughs> and a AJ, where were your parents born? Nigeria. Diversity. <laughs> <laughs> And it's all held together by me. Oh, I can't stand him. He's fucked up Radio 1. It's not Nick Grimshaw. <laughs> Chill out. Right. <laughs> so how does it work? Right, it's simple. It's a very simple premise. I've been monitoring what you guys are peeved about, hunting for the right topics to Kane. Whichever's got the most heat, we're going to go out like Theresa May's husbands at the bins. Oh, I do, <laughs> I do love a boy's job. I bet you do, Philip. But... 
The general election itself, <laughs> the boring act of the election, will be avoiding. Do you know why? No, not impartiality. This is the Wild West Internet. It's just too effing boring. Everybody knows the crow is too far in front. I am beyond defeat. <laughs> right? It doesn't... And I can already hear... Wait a minute, listen to Corbyn. It doesn't matter what genius, costed ideas Corbyn tosses out. This is a snap 100 metres election, and no-one wants to see Stephen Hawking... School meals cancelled, dementia sufferers' houses to be taken, the NHS is dying. But wait a minute, a posh person got married at the weekend. Yay! Yay! This is the Caning Live. Welcome! <laughs> yes, this is the Caning Live. Stand up, ranting and debate live from Facebook HQ. This is the most achingly cool place I've ever worked in. Hey, man, just scan your retinas and head on up. Here's a complimentary tablet computer. Bro, how'd you like your veggie shake? <laughs> what a team I have today. There's going to be people prompting my rants and helping me along, but helping field your comments is the sublime AJ Adudu, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> take on Usain Bolt. Right? <laughs> My ideas are important to social justice. I've already crossed the finish line, man. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sure you'll disagree. Get angry. Keep sending your comments. But I think I need to set up the first subject. It's never been done like this as far as I know. Each subject will be set up with a stand-up style caning rant, AJ, like Ooh. a pervy Tory at a farm, what's been getting people's goats. Absolutely, <laughs> Lord. Uh, right, now people are more livid about the dementia tax at the moment, though, so should we talk about that? Yes, this is the first one. I'm up for this. Dementia tax, disgusting. Dementia sufferers will now lose their homes to pay for their care. WT actual F. The crow, <laughs> the crow has done it again, come up with an idea so sick and evil that the script writers of the Saw franchise would have rejected it in draft one. <laughs> I, I want to play a game. I want to bleed you of your house while you lose your mind. <laughs> no. But this is the best bit. Did you hear this? The threshold of house value, £100,000. Where can you live in a house for £100,000? How out of touch is the imperial tax overlord, Philip Hammond? <laughs> no, no, no. Settle down, peasants. We're only including people's 